All right, good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Bill with World Bible School, and welcome to the book of Joshua, A Type and Shadow. Um, on this show uh, and in these lessons, we are discovering more of how the book of Joshua is filled with types and shadows of other things, such as, and I did forgot to turn my camera on, um, <clears throat> uh, such as the uh, kingdom of God, um, the eternal Christ, and the finished work. As we look in the Old Testament, many people often think of that the book of Joshua and any other Old Testament book would not contain so much revelation of eternal truth established by Father God in eternity past, who declared and declares the end result of who you were created to be from the very beginning. So as we continue in this verse-by-verse -verse study, it's important to look at all scriptures through the proper interpretive lens which is Father's eternal and unconditional love for His creation. Therefore, it's my goal to look and see what Father God was trying to reveal within a people of long ago, even as He was interacting with their version of their uh, journey, the journey of their human experience. So let's get started as we dig deep into the well of Father's mind within and see more types and shadows and symbolic messages from the book of Joshua. Uh, I want to say real quickly, uh, good morning, uh, Apostle Daniel Williams, uh, watching today. Um, I want to just, uh, since you're watching, I'm, instead of sending you a message, I'll just tell you publicly uh, that your credentials were ma mailed yesterday morning. So uh, that's taken care of. Okay, on this week's episode, uh, this is lesson number 42. And let's get started as we look at Joshua chapter 8, verses 30 to 35, which will conclude... Uh, this chapter and the next week uh, we plan to go to chapter 9. So as we look at the New King James Version, it says, Now Joshua built an altar to the Lord, uh, God of Israel, in Mount, uh, what looks like Ebal, it's Aval. Uh, it, the Hebrew enunciation, when you see a B, generally is a V in our English enunciation of words, and it's a long A, Aval. As Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of the law, uh, the law of Moses, uh, an altar of whole uh, stones, as you'll read there, uh, is the, the word whole here is shalem, shalem, uh, or it means perfect, perfect stones, over which no man has wielded an iron tool. So nothing was done to shape these stones. Literally, they were whole stones that were untouched by uh, any um, uh, craftsman's blade. And they offered on it burnt offerings to the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings. This word peace here, um, we, we generally know this. I, I mean, the phrase peace offerings is uh, shalem, or it means thanks offerings, okay? And there, in the presence of the children of Israel, he wrote on the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he had written. Then all Israel, with all their elders and officers and judges, stood on either side of the ark before the priests, the Levites, who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord, the stranger as well as he who was born among them. Half of them were in the front of Mount uh, Gerizim. Uh, it's Gerizim, Gerizim, rather, Gerizim, uh, meaning cuttings off. Okay, so we'll be looking at that. Now, half of them in front of the uh, Mount of Eval, or Eval, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded before, that they should bless the people of Israel. 
And afterward, he read all the words of the law, the blessings and the cursings, according to all that was written uh, in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses had not commanded, which Joshua did not read before all the assembly of Israel, with the women and the little ones and the strangers who were living among them. So, in conclusion to Joshua chapter 8, we see that the battle of Ai uh, is over, and now they were settled down for a time of thanksgiving. Uh, as, it, as was in the, the custom of the Old Testament among the Hebrew people, they built an altar at Mount Aval, and uh, of, of which the word Aval means stone or bare mountain. Now, Joshua 8, verses 30 to 31, we'll look at verse 30 in the New English translation so we can get another perspective uh, of this scripture. It says, then, uh, uh, then Joshua built an altar of the Lord before, uh, uh, before the Lord God of Israel on Mount a Aval. Um, let me see what, where we're at here, okay. Uh, verse 31, we'll look at this verse here with it. Just as Moses commanded the servants, uh, the Lord's servants commanded the Israelites as described in the law, uh, the law scroll of Moses. It was made with, an, uh, with uncut stones untouched by an iron tool. On it, they, burnt, uh, they offered burnt sacrifices to the Lord and sanctified tokens of peace. Now from the Net Bible, footnotes uh, is a translator's note that says the Hebrew reads as it is written in the scroll of the law of Moses an altar of whole stones on which no one had wielded iron. So the expression whole stones refers to stones in their natural condition or in essence not carved or shaped artificially with tools such as wielding iron. Uh, so all of their craftsmen with all the abilities to shape stones into whatever they wanted, actually, uh, this is telling us that, that no one touched these stones. These were untouched stones, okay? All right, so the reality is, is that when we look at these scriptures, remember that the word whole is the Hebrew word shalem, meaning perfect stones. This was where the scripture said they offered on it burnt offerings to the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings to their God. We see that Joshua had this altar built to the Lord just as Moses had commanded the children of Israel according to the book of the law of Moses. You know, this is one thing that I often highlight on uh, is that when we look at the, the, the law, oftentimes the law has been, um, uh, has been called the law of God. Um, and the truth is, the law was never uh, called the law of God. It is the, it is the law of Moses, okay? It's very important that we understand that. It is not the law of God. Uh, when you look at the law and say, I'm just keeping the law of God. No, uh, the law is the law of Moses, okay? So here, this action we're looking at was fulfilled in Deuteronomy chapters 27 and 28, which uh, it, it was there that the Lord uh, told Israel when they came to the promised land to come to these mountains, build an altar, sacrifice to the Lord, and read the law. Now, uh, we know from history that one of the things they did when they came into the camp, wherever they set up camp, when they came into the camp, that the law was written on stones. Some places I, I read where it was large stones. And so, and every morning the law was quoted or stated out loud for all the people to hear. So not only did they see the law coming in, observe all the law, you've heard that before, observe all the laws, they were coming into the camp, but observe all the laws that are going out of the camp, plus it's read out loud. Now, as they burnt, uh, as they offered burnt offerings to the Lord, we see the act of worship and consecration to their God just after this great victory. Remember, We've been looking quite a while at this victory, uh, this this battle between I and the children of Israel in that the children of Israel failed the first time because of their sins or their their mistaken identity. But once they were uh, things were established uh, based on the word of the Lord, they were able to go and take the city of I. 
Now, the truth is that when it comes to these battles and sacrifices and thanksgivings and so on, uh, the truth is that we should be grateful at all times, whether before victories, during victories, and after victories. In other words, being thankful, having a grateful heart should be a way of life for us. I realize we all deal with pressures. We all deal with stresses. We all deal with things in our lives that sometimes uh, can really get to us, you know, such as stress. Okay, everybody ha is tempted by stress in one form or another. But I think the only way to really and truly, and years ago I used to teach a lot on how to deal with stress. But I think, the, I think the real way to deal with stress is to constantly have an attitude of gratitude, to be grateful. And so don't just have a grateful attitude after you have conquered something or made a, 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 made a, um, um, a, a approached a milestone in your life or, or a major and, and, and won a victory, but have a grateful attitude all of the time. Now, as was their custom in the Old Testament, they gave the glory to the Lord always. I mean, no man took any credit, any glory, and I'm not saying that should change, but I'm just telling you their custom. Now, according to their instructions, they selected perfect stones to build the altar with so that, which, uh, so that uh, when men looked at the altar, they would uh, not see elaborate carvings. That was the point, because the elaborate carvings, even though beautiful, uh, it would uh, uh, draw their attention. It would point uh, the point was to not draw the attention uh, to man's work but to the perfection of God. So that was one of the reasons they did not carve, uh, make any carvings on these stones. I think part of this could be that these untouched stones literally uh, were was something that that um, they were used to seeing, so it was common to the eye. And and having said that, being common to the eye, the truth is it would be no different than what other people see. So uh, I, I just let's let's move on to Joshua eight verse thirty two, and this is from the Net Bible. There. In the presence of the Israelites, Joshua inscribed on the stones a duplicate of the Law of Moses, written on the Law of Moses. So they collect these stones. They're perfect stones. They're untouched. The only thing now is Josh Joshua writes the Law of Moses on this. Now, I'm so glad that what we're reading truthfully establishes that the law is the law of Moses. You say, but law, God, uh, God gave Moses the law. Well, listen, what happens is when we write, what we do is we interpret the law or we interpret what we're hearing based on our present human experience. What I mean by that is that we're not always hearing accurately, and I think it's wonderful to hear accurately. You know, I've taught the book of Revelation three times, and the, the, uh, the time that I taught it online, I taught 193 lessons. It took me three and three quarter years to complete the book of Revelation. And I'm saying that for this reason. I'm saying that because uh, I interpreted the book of Revelation as I believed I was hearing it. And I did that three different times. Now I have rewritten it, and I'm putting it into book form. Volume 1 is out there, and we're using it as the associate textbook in, in World Bible School University. The fact is, is that we interpret what we believe we're hearing based on where we're at at the time. Now, a translator's note here says that, the Hebrew could read that he wrote there on the stones a duplicate of the law of Moses, which he wrote before the sons of Israel. So nothing was hidden, okay? He's writing it, and they're watching. Now, commentary says he wrote on the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he had written. Uh, in this act of obedience, we see Joshua as a man of the book, a man of the book, Listen to this, a man of the book obeying the command of Joshua. Uh, we also see in, in 1 verse 8 um, uh, uh, that 
the the people uh, that that's that's something from Joshua one verse eight. We also see Israel as a people of the book ordering uh, their lives after God's word. Now remember Joshua one eight. We read this way back in the first couple of, of lessons, maybe even the second or third. And it says, "This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate, or you shall constantly be be uh, be constantly uh, in uh, it." Uh, day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So it's very important that we understand the concept here, even though we're not an Old Testament people, uh, even though we're not even really a new covenant people, we're an eternal covenant people. See, an eternal covenant was established from the Hebrew language in Genesis chapter 1, and no matter what the Old Testament people do, their ups and their downs, their, ver their version of their human experience, or even in the new, or even people you're around today, nothing changes once you understand that you live by an eternal covenant, an eternal truth that Father God God declared in the beginning, and what he declared was the end result of who you are, so that one day we would wake up to the truth and realize who we are. Amen. Now, from uh, uh, Bible.org, uh, 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 con uh, concerning the pilgrimage of Israel after the battle, uh, says, uh, after the victory of a at Ai, Joshua did what seemed to be foolish uh, humanly and militarily speaking uh, from verses 30 and 31. Uh, to use it would seem best to immediately pursue the military campaign and quickly uh, ahead, uh, ahead to capture and take control of the central sector of the land. But no, Joshua led the Israelites on a spiritual pilgrimage for a special time of worship. Why? Moses had commanded it, Deuteronomy 27, verses 1 through 8. Because of what this event would stand for in the lives of the Israelites. Now, I realize many of us do not keep the traditions of the Old Testament or of Jewish practices. Uh, that's okay. Uh, I don't keep Old Testament practices. I don't keep the rituals. I don't keep the the, the feasts of of the uh, of tabernacles and and all of that. Uh, not purposely, okay. If I honor the Lord and it's in any way, shape, or form like any of those things, I don't do it customarily. Now, one of the things we do as a people, we we honor uh, Easter. Uh, we honor Christmas, even though we know that. Easter, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday, and that Christmas may not be exact days based on the Jewish calendar as uh, related to our our American cal calendar or our modern calendar. But the fact is, we don't keep those practices, but we are in the eternal Christ from before the foundation of the, the, the universe and before the law of Moses ever existed. Listen, what I'm telling you is that we literally were created before there was a law of Moses. We literally were created before there was rituals and customs and traditions. And so it's very important that we learn who we are and we function in the eternal Christ based on who we are. Now, again, from uh, uh, Bible.org, it says, The distance from I to Aval uh, and uh, uh, Garizi was a long way to move all the tribes of Israel from 20 to 25 miles. Half of them were in front of the Mount of Gerizim, uh, and half of them were in front of Mount Aval. Uh, this was a beautiful place to do this, and the whole nation could hear this reading of the law uh, from this mountain. Okay, now listen to this. Uh, this area was a natural amphitheater, eff effective because of the contour of the hills. Uh, you know what I'd say to that, this positioning, this particular location? Uh, what an awesome God we serve. Amen? Now, uh, again, the word garazi uh, is interpreted uh, and used to uh, as, as to cuttings off. In other words, it was the cutting off point or indicating half 
of them in front of one place and half of them in front of another. So literally, that was it. Now, according to Deuteronomy 27, chapter 27, and chapter 28, which we're not going to read those chapters, uh, the altar was built on the mountain of cursing uh, Mount Aval, uh, and it was important to the Israelites to make sure the, the covered sacrifice was exactly at the point of where their sin and failure uh, uh, so uh, so uh, the point of their sin and failure, so that there would be no curses uh, exacted upon them. Now, I realize the last thing you and I would want to do today, here we're in the 21st century, uh, the year 2022, the last thing we want to do is, is, is hear someone uh, speak of the blessings and the curses from Deuteronomy 28. And, and have to hear that every day, and especially after a victory, because you know what that does when I have to decide, am I blessed or am I cursed? I can go back to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, or the knowledge, uh, or the knowledge of good, or the knowledge of evil. A struggle, a pull within the arm of the flesh. Now listen to this. God says you're blessed. God created you blessed. God did not create you with sickness. God did not create you with any type of sin, which is translated mistaken identity. God did not create you with death. So there was no cursing in the creation. Mankind, through the law of Moses and through other things, devised this system of blessings and cursings. What was it based on? Blessing, uh, based on obedience, cursings, based on disobedience. Now, commentary also says this event at this place shows that Israel controls the middle of Canaan and the highlands. The rest uh, is a matter of taking advantage of this strategic position. So once more, I want to read from Bible.org because these things have some, some great information and I want to give credit to these locations that I find this information. So again, this illustrates that the principle of first priorities Hear this, the principle of first priorities. Our capacity in life is always dependent on our spiritual capacity and orientation to the plan of God. Many Christians continually face defeat in their walk because they fail to take time to get alone with the Lord and reflect on Him and put on their spiritual armor. And of course, I believe that our spiritual armor is on. We don't put it on. It's on we keep it on, right? Well, therefore, without delay, Joshua led the entire nation, men, women, children, and cattle from their camp at Gilgal uh, up uh, northward up the Jordan Valley to the place specified by Moses, the mountains of Aval, uh, Joshua 8, verse 30, uh, and Gerizim, uh, verse 33, uh, which are at Shechem. Uh, this was a march of about 30 miles and evidently was not difficult or was not difficult or dangerous because they passed through an area that uh, uh, sparsely was sparsely populated. Okay, so that's important to know. Now, God chooses the best paths for us. Whatever the path, if we're following the voice of the Lord, whatever the path, literally, um, we um, uh, can know that we're safe, okay, that we're taken care of. Now, Joshua 8.33 in the Net Bible says, all the people, uh, the Hebrew says all Israel, uh, rulers or elders, leaders and judges were standing on either side of the ark in front of the Levitical priests who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Both resident foreigners and native Israelites were there. Half the people stood in front of the Mount Gerizim, Gerizim and the other people on the in front of the Mount uh, Aval, uh, as Moses, the Lord's servant, had previously instructed them to do for uh, the formal blessing ceremony. All right, now, this phrase, both resident foreigners and native Israelites were there. A translator's note says the Hebrew renders this like uh, as like the resident foreigners, uh, like the citizens. So as one goes the other. The language is idiomatic, meaning that both groups were treated the same, at least in this instance. So, <coughs> excuse me. 
I think this is a beautiful picture showing no favoritism, showing grace and blessing to all, showing covering to all, showing that whatever was spoken that day, and, and let's just, you know, the Bible said that, they, that Joshua was commanded to bless the people. Well, as Moses, the Lord's servant, had commanded to bless the people, Israel, um, uh, from a study note, uh, says uh, it points to the fact that Moses' earlier, instruct, earlier instructions are found in Deuteronomy 11, verse 29. Now, you see, uh, the Israelites faced a possible confrontation with the men of the city of Shechem. Um, which was a fortress guarding the entrance to the valley between the mount these mountains. Uh, a note from Bible.org says perhaps the she Shechemites uh, remained shut up in their city, fearful of what they had heard about the victories of Israel, and perhaps Israel conquered this city on the way. Now think about that. Because remember, it was Jericho, their first uh, victory in the land of Canaan, that they had heard about the great victories that Israel had had. All right, one commentator points out, uh, of course, the Bible does not record every battle of conquest, and the record of the capture of Shechem may have been omitted. On the other hand, the city at this time may have been a friend in friendly hands, and it may uh, simply have surrendered without resistance. So there are possibilities. Now, this city known as, uh, in the Hebrew, uh, uh, Shechem, uh, or Shikim, uh, depending on, on an enunciation, there's more than one way to pronounce some of these words. It means back or shoulders. Listen, it means back or shoulders. One might wonder why this location was chosen. Well, history says that these mountains were located in the geographic center of of the land, and from either peak, much of the promised land could be seen. Wow, what a beautiful location. Well, this was a place that represented all the land, both at that time, uh, the time of their entrance into Canaan, and also when Joshua's leadership was coming to a close. It is said that since the leadership of Joshua was coming to an end, once again, he gathered all the tribes of Shechem uh, and challenged the people to renew their covenant vows to the Lord. So beautiful. I mean, it really is beautiful. Now, I, I want to move toward the end because I'm going to give you this, the, 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 the bottom line, the, the, basically the types and shadows that we see here. But in Joshua 8, verse 34 and 35, this is from the Net Bible. It says, then afterward, Joshua read aloud all the words of the law, including the blessing and curses. Uh, just as they are written in the scroll, Joshua read aloud every commandment Moses had given before the whole assembly of Israel, uh, including the women, children, and uh, resident foreigners who lived among them. So to read every commandment out loud, a translator's note says that the Hebrew could read, there was not a word from all which Moses commanded that Joshua did not read aloud. So think about it. Joshua did as Moses and read all the words of the law. Remember what Joshua 1.8 said, that the, all the, the words of the law will not depart from your mouth. Um, the, the word, uh, he said, but you shall meditate. This word meditate is a beautiful Hebrew word. It means to mutter uh, in a low tone, such as under your breath, that you will not stop uttering or muttering the words of the law. Now, the words of the law, uh, really did mean the law of Moses. Now you could fast forward to the New Testament, which there are no was no New Testament even while we read it. Uh, it was not established until uh, late uh, in the uh, nearly 300 A.D. But the fact is, you could say that the words of the law or the commandments of the Lord would pertain to the things that the Lord spoke in the first century. Now, of course, for me, I'm always jumping back to Hebrews chapter 1, and I'm looking at the eternal truth established by the Lord. But when we talk about the words of the law, uh, this includes blessings and cursings, which worked for uh, them in that day. Now, 
I wouldn't want to stand around and hear blessings and cursings, blessings and cursings, blessings and cursings. I mean, do I obey? Do I disobey? If I disobey, here's what I'm up against. If I obey, here's what I get. Uh, and so you're always torn. Well, Hebrews 10 verses 2 through 4 in the New King James says, For then they would have not have, they would have, they, they, they would, uh, let me back up. For then would they have not cease to be offered for the worshipers once purified once purified or cleansed would have no more consciousness of sins but in those sacrifices there was the reminder of sins every year for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins wow well you see that's what happens when you live by uh when, when to those uh who live by the old testament law even today so if you're one who lives by the Old Testament law, here's what you're going to do. You're going to be constantly be reminded of your sins. And you're going to be constantly reminded of your transgressions. Uh, but, but the practice, personal uh, uh, sacrifices, uh, is one of the things they would do. And then to read the law over and over again, including the blessings and cursing, which are completely based on a person's performance, okay? Uh, based on a person's performance, literally, and we need to understand that, that God does not judge you based on your performance. Um, but, but uh, 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 and, and in this performance, a person would be attempting to prove their deserving of God's love. And yet these practices would never eradicate sin from a person's mind. Now, the sinning that a person does are from the thoughts of, a mind filled with mistaken identity. And as long as they do not know who they were created as, they will keep striving to measure up and, uh, and, and yet never quit make, uh, never quite making it. Now, I want you to hear this. The truth is that when you are reminded of who you are not continuously, that's really a disservice to the Lord because Father God created you in his image and likeness to be like him. You see, our identity is in the eternal Christ. You were created with a God identity, not a mistaken identity. Where did that mistaken identity stuff come from anyway? It came from the Ad Adam mind, uh, the Adamic mind that flowed throughout all of Bible history, even unto today. The only thing you see different in the scriptures is you see uh, uh, Genesis chapter 1 and you see Revelation, uh, you, you see Revelation um, uh, chapter 20, uh, 21 and 22. And so that is the difference, okay? And in that, we do see how that the Lord literally has said you are in the eternal Christ. You have a God identity who created you from before the beginning of time as spirit beings. And as we manifest uh, 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 vis as visible in this human form appearance realm, our experiences do not change the fact that we were eternally created in the image and likeness of our creator. I want you to hear that. No matter what you're going through right now, and no matter whether you're discouraged, you're, you feel defeated, you're ready to give up, that experience does not change who God created you as. Listen, I would say to you, cheer up. I mean, I just really feel a, a prophetic of, of flow of the voice of the Lord right now. Cheer up. Do not be discouraged. I did not create you as discouraged. I did not create you as defeated. I created you in my victory, in my authority, in my dominion, in and, and to reflect everything that I am. And I just feel like somebody today needed that word of encouragement. Just be encouraged and cheer up. Who you are is who you've always been, and that will never change. Now, also notice that Joshua brought the whole assembly of Israel, including the women, children, and uh, re resident foreigners who lived among them. Amen? And, and so, you know, because of that, don't ever give up. Now, think about 
this example. We are seeing an example here. We're not, and it may be a literal picture. They may have literally went through this, and there's no doubt that they did, but, but it's an example for us. Uh, those who lived among them. Now, a translator's note here says that the Hebrew reads, those who walked in their midst. Do you know that people walk in your midst? That's right. They walk in the, the midst of your thoughts. They walk in the midst of your prayers. And, and, and this is such a beautiful type and shadow presenting a picture of oneness among all people. Think about that. A picture of oneness among all people. Look, I know that there are people out there who are uh, are uh, who do not worship like you worship. I know there are people out there who do not live for God in the way that you live for God. But you know what? Until we decide that we're one people with one voice and one God that lives on the inside, nothing's ever going to change. So as we look at society today, we do see a lot of division among all kinds of people. But what we must realize is that people are functioning from a wrong mindset, which is what we call mistaken identity. There is a desperate need of a spiritual and a moral awakening today, even a returning of those who have uh, once been strong in faith and are now remaining in a, a state of discouragement and lack, uh, and lack of trusting the Creator because they never discovered who He was in the first place. Well, the bottom line is that when we face challenges in life, sometimes we function from the atomine which will always lead us to a lack of understanding. Yet to function from the Christ mind will always lead us to commitment, to worship, to integrity, and to the success of victory in all that we do. Amen. Blessings to all of you. I hope you got something out of this lesson today. Uh, tomorrow night, join me at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time for Kingdom Dynamics. Uh, my guest will be Apostle John Barrett. Uh, join me Friday morning for uh, 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 Friday morning conversations uh, with Apostle Daniel Williams. And uh, just a lot of fun going on, okay? So we love you. Have a great day. Thank you for watching. Please click like and share. And I'll post some things uh, at, uh, at the closing here. And uh, I just appreciate all of you so very much. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you very, very soon. Amen. Bye-bye, everyone.